Hey guys, it's Pussy Cat Purse, PC Purse, and I'm a pole dancer, pole instructor, pole enthusiast, and I like to talk about pole and all the things that we like to watch that have pole in them. So if you like those things too, come on in. So we're at episode nine of P-Valley, and this one started so funny to me because all the strippers are back in Andre, so there's like this little commercial kind of thing going on. The girls are making it clap, talking about we support Andre. They're having a big like thing outside, and Andre is out there. The news is out there interviewing him. The stripper's got his back, and then in comes Patrice. Patrice has her own float. She has on like, I told y'all her bread is like reformed hoe. <laughs> So she has on like the skin tight cat suit with the tassels. Sophisticated burlesque is what is given. And she has a pole on her float and she's twirling around the pole. The girls are like, oh, Mercedes must get it from her mama. And she's like, you know, preaching about <laughs> how she should be voted. Like, don't be swayed by the theatrics. And it just was so on brand for her. And it worked and you saw the crowd getting swayed. So we don't know who's gonna win. But also the money that Corbin gave her that they thought was gonna be her bribe. She has the money gun and she's just in the air with all his money. And I was just like, oh, Corbin's gotta be so hurt. I'd be so mad if she gave all that money out to the crowd. But I'm like, ooh. So now we don't know who's gonna win from there. It's anybody's game still. So then we see grandma in the hospital and she's fighting with um, the nurses about some water. But then we see at the same time, Uncle Clifford is dropping a glass of water himself, getting it cracking with little murder. <laughs> and they just going crazy on the like dining room table, but kitchen table. And then they get stopped because they get a phone call. So Cliff stops thinking that it's the hospital called about his grandma, but it's not, it's just some nonsense. So then little murder fixes him a plate and they start talking about how Basically, the relationship is going to have to come to some type of end. They can't keep going. Little Murder's probably going to go on tour. Uncle Cliff is probably going to be by himself because his grandmother seems like she's passing away. And then he says to Little Murder, "Can I just want to be there to hold her hand when it happens. And can you imagine not being there for somebody that you love so much when they pass away? And Little Murder just has this blank stare. And I'm like, Damn, this has a double meaning for him because he did get that with Teak. But at the same time, he took that opportunity away from Pico's family because Pico and his final words were like, hey, I have a new baby on the way. Little Murder is like, oh, well. So Pico had to die by himself. So you can see that it was a lot going on on Little Murder's face. And then Cliff is like, well, my grandmother does pass away. I'm going to need you to rap at the funeral. That would be cute, though. You know, his grandma would like that. Then Haley and Mississippi are in the club. And Haley is showing her how she's been living at the paint, trying to save money, trying to get it together. And they start discussing... Miss Mississippi's plan to, to get away. And you know the walls are thin. People always know what's going on. So for Haley to have just finished telling her not to tell her plan to anybody, now that outwardly discussing this makes no sense. But so then Miss Mississippi goes to fill up her water bottle in the kitchen. And who is she bumping into? Diamond. We knew it was coming. And immediately he goes back in to protect him over her, taking care of her. Oh, let me fill up some water for you. And it's crazy because, you know, he's the big, strong guy. He's always knocking people out and stuff. But when he's in front of her, but when he's in front of her, he's always, he's almost a little bit submissive. Like he's like taking care of her all the time. He just likes to take care of people. He handles things at the paint. He handles things for Uncle Clifford. He handles things for Miss Mississippi. If he's not taking care of somebody, he don't know what to do with himself. So that's how you know it's not going to last with Big Bone because Big Bone can take care of herself. She's a tough chick. Like, she's got it. He, he might like her. There might be some stress relief. Like, I don't have to worry about things when I'm with you, but that's not who he is. He wants Miss Mississippi. So he's over there taking care of her and then Big Bone interrupts. Like, eh, what's going on? She thirsty, but I'm hungry. I will eat this check. I'm like, mm. I feel the ferocity, but I don't think it's gonna work, sis. I think he's gone. Maybe not in real life, but on the show, he might be gone. So then we have Miss Mississippi, Mercedes, Roulette, and Whisper on the stage. They're practicing for the opening night. And of course, Mercedes is still, is still struggling because her shoulder is still hurting her and she's afraid. 
And it was so funny when Mercedes was on the pole trying to do stuff that she couldn't really do yet because she had a moment where she broke the hole and she saves herself safely, but Mississippi is under her and she knows, oh no, she comes tumbling down, it's going to be a problem. She just scurries down the pole and you can definitely run down the pole. <laughs> it's kind of funny to say because it's like, you don't really imagine yourself being able to run, but it's, you know, hands down, just going down the pole. That probably looks crazy, but you can definitely run down the pole. She runs down the pole to save herself. And I felt so bad. <laughs> and Roulette starts calling her out like, oh, you old, you ain't got it. She was telling her it's your fault. You should have got back on the pole when the accident first happened, but you're scared and that's why you're going to keep falling. And she's wrong and she's also right. She's wrong in the sense of if you're hurt, you should not force yourself to get back up there. You're just going to irritate your injury more. But at the same time, if she's afraid of falling, you're not, it's not going to happen. You got to have a little bit amount of fearlessness to do a sport like this. So she needs to kind of get over it her fear essentially, but you can't just throw yourself back up there. But they're hurting Mercedes feelings and I felt so bad for her. <laughs> so then Haley comes up with the bright idea of, well, Mercedes, why don't you just be the base for the tricks? Meaning why doesn't she be the person underneath? The tricks on the top might look a little bit more spectacular or the person on the top might do a trick where they look like they're standing on the base, but it's no problem with being the base, but apparently Mercedes is offended by this. And she's like, I'm not gonna be the base. Then they say, then they have an issue because Miss Mississippi is getting a cut of the door. So Miss Mississippi kind of tries to back out of it. You know, she's like the nice girl, but Mercedes just gets mad, rips her post off the wall and storms out. And it's because it's hitting her. And as soon as she gets outside and Uncle Clifford stops her, she immediately just real talk, I don't have it like I used to have it. I can't drive it low like I used to. And I should have been retired five years ago. And this is just like, I needed to hear it. I know it's true. Keyshawn is better than me. It's like all her troops were coming out. All the stuff she doesn't want to face, but she knows it. It was hard. And <laughs> Uncle Cliff is like, listen, sometimes your dreams got to grow and evolve. And they're both kind of going through the same thing because he doesn't know what's going to happen with the pink. And so when Mercedes gets ready to leave, she gets a text from Farrah like, oh, come down to Memphis. She's like, that was the coach's wife. But to go back to what Roulette was saying about somebody's going to get injured and Haley saying, play to your strength to be the base. It's so true. If you get injured, you can't keep trying to do the same things on that injured side. You need to let it heal. So why not play to your other strengths? Do some stuff on the other side or do another trick or be the base. Do other things that hide your injury and play to your strengths. She's a whole teacher. She should know that. So they're making me irritated with this part. So then Big Bone bumps into Miss Mississippi and she's not nice to her. <laughs> Miss Mississippi's like, oh, sorry, I didn't see you. And she's like, why not? Like, I don't see how you didn't see. And she just lets her know that the walls are thin and I know that you're planning to leave and I'm glad you out of here tomorrow. And I'm just like, what was the point of her telling her that? I mean, if the girl is already on her way out and you think that she wants your man, but she's leaving, the problem is solving itself for you. I don't even know. I'd be like, just sit back and wait for it to happen. Okay, Diamond, you like her? She's not going to be here. And oh, you like Diamond? Well, you're not going to be here. So bye. Like, she's getting herself worked up over nothing at this point. And I'm like, watch her mess it up for herself. So Mercedes goes to Memphis because, I mean, what else is she going to do? She basically just said, I ain't dancing no more. So she goes to Memphis and Farrah has on exhibit the photos that she took of Mercedes and it's called the Mercedes Experience. The photos are gorgeous. They make Mercedes look amazing. She looks strong, she looks powerful, she looks graceful, she looks all these things. And you hear all the spectators making comments like that and it makes Mercedes feel good. I'm also like, dang, she just put this woman all up on the wall like that. Did she get permission to do that? I don't know, maybe I just got my photo all up like that. All right, so the wife, Farrah asked Mercedes if she would sleep with her again. And Mercedes is like, eh, that was mostly business, so no. But, you know, I didn't think that I would poll again. And then she herself starts pointing out how, even with taking the photos, she was using her less strong side. The woman is like, well, we should all use our weaknesses as our strengths like you. And it's true, Mercedes, use your other side. <laughs> Do other things. You don't have to give it up just because the same old thing ain't working. Just remix it, babes. So we go back to the paint. Things is like 
getting ready to open up and the house mom and Haley are talking and Haley is looking at the the outfits that they have for the night and she's like this is what you got this stuff is so old like go to rainbow and go get some outfits and that was so funny because if you know rainbow you know they might have some clothes where they're trying to look like regular clothes but then they also had the thought clothes so i thought that was a little funny but then Haley gets sick and she runs to the bathroom and starts throwing up. And I'm like, oh, we know she's pregnant. And then Whisper comes out. She's like, oh, girl, you ready for twins? And I'm like, oh, twins with a married man. I guess we're not getting ready to autumn. Because she had basically told Miss Mississippi that this was her last night, too. Like, once they figured out what was going on with the sale of the pink, she was out of town. So now we know she's probably going to be stuck in town. Outside of the pink, is is packed. Lots of people want to get in, including a very big pregnant lady. And she's important because she's Pico's wife. How Pico was saying he's got a baby on the way. His wife is very, very, or his girlfriend, whatever she is, is very, very pregnant trying to get into the club. Maine is out there. Everybody's out there. So you know it's looking mixy. Probably something kind of crazy is going to go down tonight, even though we need it to be a peaceful night. And there's also that woman, the inspector is out there and she's trying to keep them from going over capacity. They bribe her to let them go to 75 instead of 50% by saying, you know, Big L is in there in the mix for her as well. So she's like, Big L and the girls, I'll take it all. So, so then Uncle Clifford is in the back with all the girls and Toy starts coughing again. And you know he's on edge about his grandmother. So he kicks her out, like, get out. I don't want to see you here anymore. For real, get out. So she's upset. And then Tina Snow, Meg the Stallion, is in this episode, and she's coming in with Lil Murder. The Lil Murder has just put it on blast. Like he's starting his tour at the paint. So now you know they're gonna get even more business. And then he starts walking in with Meg, and it's lit. And Lil Murder was walking in, Maine and his friends see him walking in. So you know they're outside plotting, and it's not a good thing. So Tina's basically in the hallway with Lil Murder. She's like getting him to drop the boat, and she's talking with the two of them and Cliff. And they're both being very obvious that there's something going on. And Cliff is a little bit jealous of the way that Tina's kind of flirting with him and stuff. But he winds up leaving to go to the, the like, special room. And, and Lil Murder seems jealous of that, too. Even Tina, like, grabs his face and is like, okay, focus. So then when Cliff gets to the Paradise Room, it's Corbin. And Corbin is saying how it's been a while since he's been there. And remember, he used to go to the room and we used to see sometimes Mercedes and Mississippi like doing things to him. He has his whip and he's like, I will give you $250,000. I just need this experience. And so he likes to get whipped across the back, kind of like a slave. We know he's got a lot of internal issues dealing with his race and just his, his history. But whoo, child. When he left, he was bleeding through his shirt. Like, it was a lot. But Andre is at the paint. We've, we've seen him at the paint before, but this time he was on the stage. He gave a little speech on the stage. It was funny. And then outside, Roulette and Whisper bump into Toy, and she's out there crying because she's like, I got no money. They're going to cut off my lights. And so Whisper is like, no, hook her up. So Roulette gives her some money, and she's like, all right, I'll pay you back. And Roulette is like, this ain't a loan. Let her know, like, no, you're going to work this money off. And I'm like, Roulette is in the club pimping these girls. This is a shame. She's pimping Whisper, and now she's pimping Toys. This is just a mess. So then Roulette bumps into Duffy, and Duffy is, like, noticing this new chain that she's got on with the money from him breaking down the car for her. And he's like, oh, okay, so I did this work for you, and I've been hitting you up. I'm not hearing anything. And he tries to pull her arm, and she just snatches him up, hands him up by the throat against the wall, like, don't put your hands on me. And he's like, you know, you're so busy doing your own thing, but who's taking care of you? So he starts playing with the, the kitty there, and she's kind of like, eh, a little less harsh on him. <laughs> I guess he's taking care of I'm still here for Roulette and Duffy. I still think they're a cute little couple or whatever they want, a situation shit, whatever. I'm here for them. So then Meg hits the stage performing as Tina Snow. And of course, Miss Mississippi is up there dancing. And in the audience is Maine and Mercedes. And he's asking her, you know, why are you not up there dancing? And she's just sitting back and watching and seeing how pretty it is. And she's like, sometimes you just want to sit back and appreciate some art. And at that moment, I was like, I don't know if Mercedes is really done with dancing. I think she's going to find a way to to make it work. You know, you work through an injury. You still got to make it happen. It's not over for her. 
they are women way older than her. They have way more issues to still pole dance and compete and all types of other stuff. So she could still shake it and make it happen in the club, you know? So then <laughs> Meg brings out Lil Murder and they're on the stage together. And I'm like, ah! I know in real life, he was like, you know, I'm on the stage with Meg the Stallion. That had to have been so much fun for him. But the song is going good. And then of course a fight breaks out and Uncle Clifford had warned him not to have a repeat of Murder Night, but the fight starts getting bad. Miss Mississippi is on the floor like this, fetal position, not knowing what to do. Damsel in distress mode, and then here comes our shining night diamond just running through with a gun, knocking people over combat mode, scoops her up, takes her to safety, and he's like, Are you okay? And she just starts kissing him. And of course, you know, Big Bone is in the cut, like <sighs> broken hearted. And I'm like, Girl, you already know he wasn't yours. I'm sorry, but like, you know, he wasn't. But Diamond still kind of like walks away from Keyshawn, but he's still, you know, she low key rocks his world, maybe high key. She rocks his world. So he's walking away. So you know Big Bone, this is not gonna go over well with her. Everybody else, you know, that was involved in it kind of scatters. And so <sighs> Uncle Cliff and Lil Murder are in a room by themselves and Lil Murder is just going off about trying to ambush him on the stage. And he lets it slip like, oh, I'll, I'll kill somebody else in April. And so Uncle Cliff is like, is like, <sighs> Is that what I helped you cover up? And he lets him know that it's not. And Lil Murder is saying how he's gonna be his own security from now on. And you have a target on your head. Are you serious? It's almost like he has a death wish now. And he was saying he's got that devil spirit on him now. Like a few episodes ago, I'm like, boy, you better shake that thing off. Cause you, officially we found out in this episode that he's no longer just like a neighborhood famous kind of guy. He's like, no, he's on the, he's on the radio with Tina Snow. Like it's a big thing. Everywhere he goes, people know who he is. This is like his first, Big hit, big, big hit with like a well-known star. Boy, if you don't stop doing dumb stuff. <laughs> but he's just fed up with all the nonsense. And then when Lil Murder walks off and he kicks something, he realizes Big L has been selling drugs through his club. So now he's mad and he goes to confront Big L. Big L is sitting there with Duffy, dismisses Duffy. And then he starts trying to deflect, like not even addressing the fact that he's selling drugs in the club and Uncle Cliff told him he's not wanting to be a part of that. He just starts talking about how he's losing his spot to Haley and how Haley is a problem. Basically, it's like, we should kill her. <laughs> and Uncle Cliff is like, you're fired. I told you I don't deal with the whole drug thing. I'm not with it. Like, no. So Big L is mad and he storms off. Haley and Andre are at Andre's house and they're kissing and making out. And she had told him she had something to tell him. So I guess she's going to tell him that she was pregnant. But... When they get there, who turns on the lights? His wife. So then Mercedes bumps into Lil Murder. And it's just like full circle, like episode one, season one. He's like listening to his music. And she comes in. She's like, you know, when I first came in, it was just a perpetrator, a little, little punk. I forgot what she said. But anyway, and he, you know, Lil Murder has a way of being so sweet and talking to people, making them feel good about themselves. And he starts letting her know, you know, like you got a booty like no other, it finds the beat. Like you could just fuck it up on the stage with that booty that you got. And at first she's offended. He's like, no, it's a, compl it's a compliment. Like nobody do it like you. And she's like, what about Keyshawn? He's like, you a legend. Like it would be my art if you would listen to my music. Just like the first one. So she listens to the music and I'm like, how much you want to bet she's going to hit the stage to this new little murder beat that's about to be fire. And she probably going to have to roll that booty and make it twerk. At least that's what I'm hoping for for next episode. So um, so then outside, this is after, you know, the fight and everything, the pregnant lady, Pico's wife, girlfriend, whatever, is saying how she could feel it inside that little murder's the one that killed Pico. So we know something's going to happen with that. And then Big Bone is scrolling through her phone and looking at photos of her and Diamond and that ring that Diamond has. So, oh, uh, we don't know what she's got going on. And then the very end, Uncle Cliff sees Miss Mississippi getting ready to sneak out. And she's leaving a note on the mirror for Mercedes. And he stops her and tells her, you know, go on and fly, but gives her a nice hug. And it's like a nice comforting parental kind of hug. And then he sits down and it's just like, what the hell is going to happen? It's to be continued. So I think next episode is our last episode for the season. <sighs> I'm telling you, I think that Mercedes is going to hit the stage again. I think Mississippi ain't going nowhere. Diamond's already back 
under her spell and Big Bone is probably gonna mess it up. She already knows her secret. Um, I We don't know what happened with Cliff's grandmother. He got a phone call about it, but we don't know what happened. I'm hoping she's not gone, like that they didn't just give us that little glimpse of her in the hospital just to be like, oh, she's gone now. I hope she made it. Um, fingers crossed for that one. I don't know who I think is gonna be mayor. I don't know. I'm excited to see how that's gonna happen, but I, it's gotta be something where Cliff is gonna get to keep the, the paint. Also, Andre brought up the idea to Haley about leasing. So, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen with the paint. I don't know what's gonna happen with Haley staying in town. I feel like she's not gonna go anywhere since she's pregnant. Um, Andre and his wife stay together. I don't know about all that. She might hold their marriage over his head, especially if he wins and he doesn't want to look bad in the neighborhood for having a mistress. I don't know. So many things could happen. So our tutorial for today, we're going to learn the entry that Mercedes did to some of her tricks when she was having a hard time on the pole when she was practicing with Keyshawn. And so she passed through something called a crucifix, which is when you go upside down and bring both your legs to the pole. So I'm gonna show you how to do that because it can be a transitional move or it can be a move that you do all by itself. So I'm gonna show you how to do that and how to descend safely. Your crucifix. This one might feel a little bit scary to you because you'll be upside down vertically and you might feel like, where am I in space and time? Oh my God, I'm upside down. But you'll be fine. We'll go through some familiar shapes that we've seen before on this channel and then you put it all together. You'll be fine. Let's go to the call. We're working on inversions today. So if you're just learning, I suggest you have some type of crash mat like this one behind me. So the first thing that we want to revisit is our basic climb and our climbing foot brace because you'll be in a climbing foot brace upside down. So again, if you just want to do it from the ground, we'll bring one foot opposite the pole, ankle on one side, knee on the other, and you can bend the uh, knee forward. The other leg is going to cross in front. I'm going to squeeze at both spots at my knees. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. This is what you're doing in the air. It's a lot harder to hold it when you're standing upright than it is when you're up a level or when you're upside down. So then the next thing we want to revisit is our invert or our chopper. And so again, you're just going to walk your hips in front of the pole. You're going to bring your arms out and then your inside arm is going to bend and you're going to come into your strong arm grip or your bicep grip. You're going to tuck your knees into your chest while you tilt back and extend your legs. The next part is the tricky part. Let's pretend we're in our climb and we're here. But once we invert, we're in this position. We need to let go of this arm, the inside arm, so that we can center ourselves and come here. Once I come into my invert, my inside arm is going to release and I'm going to weave my chest around so that I can forward face the pole. So I'm going to come into my invert, release my inside hand, weave my chest around, loosen the grip of my legs, and then I can come down. Whatever type of exit you want. Okay, let's try it on spin so you can see how that looks. So let me know how you feel about that. I was terrified to do the crucifix for the longest time, so let me know how you feel about it. Let me know if this tutorial helped. And I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.